already know you've done it earlier today. And we're getting ready to start. It will be Nebraska, the higher seeded team leading off. There is Nebraska head coach Bill Straub looking for his fourth NCAA women's title and it's Valerie Callberry with the first roll of the match. Callberry has been the third best bowler of the week. She's averaged 213 from Canada. Good first shot coming in a little light on the head pin but left the seven pin. Easy spare and a good shot to be able to read the lanes. And the spare picked up by Callberry. Carolyn, what's the significance of being the leadoff bowler in this Baker format? I think the leadoff bowler is one of the most important positions in Baker. You are the one that reads the lanes, gives the information back to your team, and not only that, you're the one that's got to motivate everybody. You're the first shot. You've got to come back and go, come on. So you're the team spirit. You're reading the lanes. It's a very important position. And now the lefty, Tracy Ganjoin, will lead things off for Fairleigh Dickinson. And a strike. I believe she is our lone lefty in the field. She grew up 45 minutes from here. Played a lot of her high school matches here. There's Mike Lepresti, who has really guided this team to prominence in his eighth season. He's been the only head coach since they moved to NCAA bowling. Won the national title in 2006. This is Jasmine Lagerman for Nebraska. Good shot by Jasmine, coming in just a little high, leaving the 4-7. And Lagerman picks up the spare. Lagerman from Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. You have players on both teams, really from all over the world. It is truly an international sport. This is Sarah Littrell. She's the only non-New Jerseyan in the starting lineup for Fairleigh Dickinson. She's from Chesterfield, Michigan. And she strikes. Great start for the Knights. Great form, great leverage at the line, playing a very direct line down the lane between the second and third arrow. Knocks all 10 into the pit. So two strikes open up this championship. And now one of our international bowlers, Daniel Vandermeer from the Netherlands, a junior. And will it go down? No. So still no strikes for Nebraska. And Vandermill will have that 10 pin left for her spare. Ball coming light into the head pin, but gets the seven pin off the deck with a little help, leaving the flat 10. And Vandermeer picks up the spare. What do you think about these lanes tonight, Carolyn? What are these players facing? Well, they're facing a 41-foot lane pattern, which is a pretty long pattern. 25 milliliters of oil. They're using an oil called Infini Infini <laughs> Infinity Oil. I'm sorry, I'm tripping over my words here. Um, what that basically does is they are going to be playing between the second and third hour. They're going to be playing an inside line. And this oil allows the lanes and the condition to hold up a little bit longer than if you went with the shorter pattern. And this is Jolie Carrillo, who was a late addition to the starting lineup. She replaced Nicole Toto. Carrillo, just a sophomore from nearby Clifton, New Jersey. And 
she picks up the spare. So no open frames yet for Fairleigh Dickinson. In this opening game, Carolyn, what are you looking to establish as a team? Because you have plenty of time to catch up in this best of seven series. I think the thing you're looking for is to watch the ball reaction. Whose ball is getting to the pocket the most consistent and make the read off of that. Also, as it's getting down to the seventh, eighth, ninth frame, you need to start looking at the other lane to see what that lane is doing so that you know what moves to make when you go over there. Well, certainly a lot can be gained from this roll from Katie Ann Sopp, first strike of the night for Nebraska. Danielle McEwen up next for Fairleigh Dickinson, just a freshman. She's had the seventh best average of the week, averaging 204 per game. Right between, almost around that third arrow, gets it a little bit right down the lane. Ball doesn't quite recover, leaving the two pin. And that's one of the things that the coaches said they saw during the week is that there wasn't much area to swing the ball to the right. There wasn't a lot of hold. You had to keep moving in to where the condition would allow you to play. And McEwen picks up the spare. Why is that? Why not a lot of room here as opposed to other lanes? Because of the 41-foot oil pattern. So with the 41-foot pattern, you're going to be closer to the head pin, more in the middle part of the lane, which is not going to give you a lot of area to the right. And up next, the NCAA Bowler of the Year, Cassandra Luthol from Blackhawk, South Dakota. And you talk about intensity. You just stare into the eyes of Cassandra Luthol. leader by example on this Husker team in her second straight national championship. And she knocks it down for the spare. But still, Fairleigh Dickinson up in this opening game. Again, it's a 10 frame game. Leupold is the anchor, which means she'll bowl the final frame. And now here's the anchor for Fairleigh Dickinson, Erica Perez, a four-time All-American. I guess a lot of people want to know, is the anchor considered the best bowler in the Baker format, yes or no? I think everyone wants to put that label on it, that your best bowler is always your, your anchor bowler. The majority of the time, it is one of your strongest bowlers. But, you know, at times, your anchor bowler should be the person that you think can keep the ball in the pocket and hopefully carry that strike when they need it. And at the halfway point in this opening game, Perez gets the spare. Fairly Dickinson trying to win on its home turf here in the state of New Jersey, leading early in the opening game of this best of seven game match for the national championship. We'll be back for the second half of game one in a moment. 